Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with our sixth round of 16 main draw match in the PST Bettini Fuel World Open. On court right now in the bright red shirt, Mohamed El Shabini, the charismatic young Egyptian. His opponent in the, let's call it blue, Nathan Tico from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Egypt has some of the deepest talent pool of squash players in the world. Mohammed, before turning pro, was the junior national champion in Egypt, top ranked player in the U19 bracket. And he was one of the star recruits for a pro squash tour a year ago, having won several tournaments. He quickly moved up and became the PST's number one player in the season standings last year, a year ago. This is his first tournament of the year. He's looking for a deep, uh, looking to advance deep in the straw and earn one of the automatic bids from the World Open into the World Championship in two weeks at the Detroit Athletic Club. I haven't seen Muhammad on court in a long time, but I can tell he is much bigger, stronger, and fitter, leaner. Looks like he's been living in the gym for the past year. This is Nathan's second appearance in Pro Squash Tour Tournament action this year. Competed in our Philadelphia Open. Held at the, chess, uh, the Philadelphia Squash Club. Next to the campus, or on the campus of the Chestnut Hill Academy in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Nathan played his college squash at St. Lawrence University. Bases himself in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And has jumped to an early 3-1 lead in this main draw match. The voice you'll be hearing in the background is Australian Wade Johnstone, who earlier took care of his own business, advancing into tomorrow's quarterfinals with a 3-1 victory over Sadesh Ojigir. Wade was an early proponent of Pro Squash Tour's decision to eliminate the traditional let from match play. Wade, for a very big man, 6'2", 6'3", moves very well and likes the more free-flowing style of our game versus some of the other al alternatives out there. Nathan is covering all corners of the court. Muhammad forcing him to do so. Poor Nathan had a tough match last night. Maybe looking for a little oxygen early in this match. Muhammad really kept him on the run at that in that early first game rally. <coughs> Unforced error from Nathan. You could hear his Frustration. Shabini taking a moment to clear his goggles. Pro Squash Tour is the only single store on the planet that requires players to wear uh, protective eyewear in court. It's the right thing to do for sure. It's not worth the risk. The players grouse a little bit about it. But with the fast pace of PSD action and the small size of a ball being the perfect size to do damage to an eye, 
it's important that the players wear that. Mohamed El Shabini had appealed for the point. The referee did not give it, denying that appeal. Mohamed challenged the decision. There was a split decision from the challenge officials. One official believed Shabini should have the point. The other would have given it to Mr. Tico. So with the split decision, the main referee's call stands. Players can challenge the referee's decision in pro squash tour action. There are challenge officials seated on the floor on the left and right wall. If both challenge officials disagree with the decision of the main referee, the call is overturned. If the referees do not agree, or there's a split decision, the original call will stand. Players ha are given three unsuccessful challenges at the beginning of a match, meaning if they challenge the call and it's overturned, they keep their remaining challenges. If the call stands, they lose one of their challenges. They'll get a fourth challenge in game four if it goes that far. And they'll get a fifth challenge in game five if it goes that far. Mohamed El Shabini wins game one, 11 to four. And we'll be back in just a couple more minutes after a word from one of our sponsors, Atlanta Immigration Attorney Joseph Rosen. Obtaining citizenship should be easy, but it's not. Issues such as time out of the country, past DUI convictions, and other minor criminal convictions can cause serious problems. These problems lengthen the process and can increase the complexity. On the other hand, I have had clients who have obtained citizenship through a parent and didn't know it. My name is Joe Rosen. My immigration law offices have helped many people like you successfully get through the citizenship application process. Our focus is immigration, and as a former FBI agent and a lawyer, I know how government agencies operate. My knowledge and experience will make dealing with the Department of Homeland Security easier for you and could be the difference between getting citizenship or not. Call me at 678-461-6046 to make an appointment for a consultation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting to you live from the corporate headquarters of Live Technology in Tuxedo Park, New York. I want to thank tour sponsor Joe Rosen's law practice. I also want to thank some of our local sponsors here who brought the PST to Tuxedo Park again. United Check Cashing, Live Technology, which is hosting the tournament, Keel Heating and Air Conditioning, Batini Fuel, which is the title sponsor of the 2013 P Batini Fuel PST World Open, Halsa, and their health products. You can find more about Halsa at halsamat.com, H-A-L-S-A-M-A-T.com, Laxton, Money Making Machines, Cool Cap, Cool and Cap spelled with a K, and DCI Drug Consulting. We are th just about three quarters of the way through our opening day action of the main draw of the Batini Fuel World Open. Entering court right now is Mohamed El Shabini, the former junior national champion in Egypt, who has really captivated crowds across the United States as he worked his way into America. Last year, he reached a high ranking of number one on the Pro Squash Tour season standings. Walking on court now. Uh, just about to walk onto court, soon to be walking onto court, Allentown, Pennsylvania's Nathan Tico. Shabini trains out of Boston, Massachusetts uh, at Harvard University. And the young Egyptian certainly looks strong. He must have been training a lot, living in the weight room for sure. Referee Wade Johnstone has called the players to order. Mr. Shabini leads the match one game to love, one game to zero. Now serving love all in game two. Oh. Uh, well, he had 
Nate on a string right there. Just hit one too many shots. Nate couldn't get. Forced error from Nate. He'll regret that. <laughs> Gives himself a moment to catch his breath. Shabini now has a 2 0 lead in game two. Yeah, can hear Nate on course. Nate on court talking to himself. He's frustrated. Shabini can do that to you. He has the ability to hit the ball at great pace and intensity and take it early when he wants to. And he also has, as he showcased right there, really soft hands, delicate touch. Able to wrong foot, Nate, right there, putting the ball deep, in the back of the right court. Six one. Forced error from Muhammad gives Nate his second point of the second point of the game, serving two six. Seven, two. Nate's talking to him a little bit, not talking to himself a little bit on court. Clearly frustrated, and here looking for the point. Here the referee gives it to him. Muhammad smiling. I think he wants to challenge, but he chooses not to. I think he, I think he knew he was fighting a losing argument there, and so chooses to keep his challenges. It's three seven, Nathan. Uh, three seven, Muhammad Shabini winning. and the crowd having a good laugh there. Uh, both players trading drops. And when Shabini finally put the ball deep, Nate couldn't get back in time. A little good-natured ribbing back and forth. to Muhammad. Shubini will be looking to go up two games to love. And there he does. 11-3 game to Shubini. Now we'll have a word from the Cleveland, Downtown Cleveland Business Alliance. 
so we definitely made a commitment to the city and to ourselves for at least 10, 15 years. We have views all the way from downtown out to Lake Erie. Being a young professional downtown, this is like the place to be. The energy downtown is amazing. Playhouse Square, the restaurants are our favorite part. It's a city that's really coming back and becoming the city to be in. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back courtside at the corporate headquarters of Live Technology in Tuxedo Park, New York, with a boisterous attitude. It's really a good crowd here tonight for the opening round matches of the 2013 Bettini Fuel PST World Open. The Young's superstar, Mohamed El Shabini, entering the court now. Mohamed uh, has quickly gone up two games to love in this round of 16 match. We haven't seen Muhammad much on PST tournament action. He was very active a season ago where he had a number one ranking and won several tournaments during the course of the season. After some time away, he's coming back to court today looking to earn one of the automatic bids to the PST World Championship in Detroit in a couple weeks, May 3, 4, 5 at the Detroit Athletic Club. And Muhammad, when he walked into the building tonight, I, I was impressed. He, he's a... Uh, a young skinny kid a year ago. It looks like he's been living in the gym. He is strong, and I mean strong. Uh, there's not an ounce of fat in him, and he's got ripped biceps, triceps, traps, and he looks like he could be on the beach. Uh, uh, you don't usually see squash players with that, that level of fitness and strength in terms of muscle definition. Squash players, of course, are among the fittest on the planet. It was for Magazine that just a couple of years ago ranked squash as the best sport in the world for getting in shape and staying fit. Amateur players will burn about 1,000 calories during an, uh, uh, an hour-long match at the pro level. These guys are getting their heart rates upwards of 180 beats per minute and burning as many as 1,500 calories in an hour-long match. On court right now, in the dark shorts, Mohammed El Shabini of Egypt, two games to love up. Serving at 0 0 and returning the serve is Nathan Tico, Allentown, Pennsylvania's young star who played his college squash at St. Lawrence University. Nathan advanced into the main draw with a qualifying bracket victory last night. Tournament action this week has been disrupted a little bit. Uh, there are some very upsetting events happening in Boston, Massachusetts, and some of the players who are entered in this tournament uh, just couldn't make it. The travel plans were impacted, so we had to receive the draw this morning. Uh, the second qualifying round was canceled. Uh, and our thoughts uh, and best wishes go to the, out to the people in Boston and those impacted by the events over the past week. We hope, in some ways, that the sport of squash is one that can help bring people together. It's played by people of all ages in 185 different countries across the globe. estimated participation is 20 million plus, including an over a million in the United States. The New York Times a few years back wrote an article talking about how squash is such a great hook for kids to get into college, as all of the best colleges and universities in America have a squash team, squash program. And as a result, we have seen an explosion in or dramatic uh, increase in the number of participants at the junior level. Music. 
Nathan talking to himself, mm-hmm. trying to find some motivation on court right now. Finds himself down 2-4, needing this game 3 to keep the match going. Well, the referee had initially given the point to Nathan Tico when a Muhammad appealed for the point. The referee didn't give, to it, give it to him, but Muhammad challenged the call, and the challenge officials agreed with Muhammad. The call was overturned as both players disagreed. Muhammad keeps his remaining challenges, and he wins the point. Of course, in the ensuing rally, uh, unusual unforced error it means that Nathan is now serving 3-5. Well, Nathan challenging the call, hoping to get a moment of luck, but it's not to be. Point is close to Shabini, 6-3. Both players just swinging wildly right now, maybe trying to put a hole through the front wall. This is not the most creative squash I've ever seen. Maybe this will help Nathan find his footing. Boy, they are just swinging hard. <coughs> That got an enthusiastic roar out of the crowd for sure, and Nathan got a little adrenaline rush. I don't know that it was the most attractive squash I'd ever seen, but a winning rally nonetheless. You don't get points for aesthetics. Match draws a little closer, four to six. Nathan will be looking to build on that. A mistake from Muhammad, five six. Well, Nathan certainly gave it everything he had on that point. The crowd urging Nate on as he faces an eight to five deficit here in game three.
As you can see there, Nate's looking for oxygen right now. It should be he's had him running around quite a bit. Ooh. That reverse angle caught Muhammad by surprise. And it appears and it have worked. Reverse angle sort of caught Muhammad flat footed and Nate wins the rally. And then a mistake that really should not happen. He served the ball out. Here it is, 10-6. Muhammad serving for the match. Up two games to love. 10-6, four match balls to win. Nate was able to at least fight off one of those match balls as he stands down 7-10 right now. his breath, <laughs> but invite him over for a quick word. Nate, you had a brilliant match last night, getting a spot in the main draw in the qualifying last night, but uh, Muhammad just looked a little too strong today. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, stood up for me, but uh, overall I think we had a fun time out there tonight. Some good rallies, so. It's good to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Valentine, Pennsylvania. Well played, Muhammad. It's good to have you back. Am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I haven't seen you in a year. I used to look down, I look up, and you look <laughs> big and strong. You've been in the gym for a year. <coughs> I've been trying to work out a little bit. I mean, for the beach, I'm working out, of course. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to get ready for that next season. Hopefully, my practice will just be a little too short. Hopefully, I'll get ready for this uh, next main tour thing. I had forgotten how effortless you like just appear to glide around the court and balls that are 15 feet away. You take a step and you're there. You look to be in good form. Yeah, I've been working on my movement a lot lately. I've been trying to do a lot of base running and grinding out in the court, so it improved a lot. So many great players have come out of Egypt in the past generation. You were the Egyptian junior champion. Now you're turning pro. You're training out of Harvard University. How are you enjoying your time in America? It's, it's pretty good, yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've been training a lot lately. Like uh, all the teams outside, and sometimes uh, when I'm not even spent on, on the field, I get really concerned. So if I come down, it's been like a, a, a big addition to a meal to the work we need to stay clean together in and out of the weight room. So it's great to have you back, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Egyptian sensation, Mohammed El Kadimi. Congratulations to Mohammed, who's going to start in tomorrow's quarterfinals. We have two matches remaining in our. Uh, main draw being broadcast to you live from the corporate headquarters of live technology. I'm going to make sure the players are ready and warmed up and we'll be back in just a minute with our seventh round of 16 match of the day. We're getting there. <laughs> 